But I think it's the greatest art form. I think the ability to, whether it's a three minute set, five minute, 10, half hour, an hour. Mm -hmm. I saw Steve Martin years ago went for two hours. Wow. That was an artist at work taking us mm -hmm. through this comedic journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of the comics out there that I love, they've created a combination of, of, of surprise, relatability, cleverness, through this vessel that each one is unique, as unique as a Cezanne is to a Picasso is to a Moreau. Every standup is a different vessel. And I love the way they, I'm going crazy with this metaphor, <laughs> but the way they paint the picture with their jokes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I just love it. So artistry, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Hi everyone. Welcome back. This is season six of Willfully Funny. This week, my guest is Waterloo, Iowa-based actor, comedian, politician, and general wonderful person, Gary Kroger. <laughs> well, thank you for the wonderful person plug. <laughs> thank you very for sweet. thank you for being here. <laughs> well, my pleasure. Especially if you think I'm wonderful. <laughs> I do. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, well, we've become friends. Yes, so we we'll have. let people know about that. Yes, but, uh, yes. That's very yes. kind of you. Thank you. Yes. So thank you for being here. Before we continue, can you uh, share your your social media with us? Well, you know, for one thing, I keep an open page on Facebook, um, and it's not that I can friend everyone, but my page where I keep it a combination of politics and humor is is an open space. Um, try to not call me horrible person i may delete you <laughs> right. it's always nice to start with wonderful as, as you just did but again i i invite people to participate there but i have a i have a blog that i still write even though no one really reads blogs anymore <laughs> it's called gary has issues and it can be found at gary has issues.com but i try to keep a, a, a just a general political pulse that's a pretty sober blog for the most part i like to write about you know uh social consciousness social justice the issues that are on my mind and should be on most people's minds and i keep it relatively current but i also have a podcast that i do with kenny seisler a director from hollywood and we've been doing that for several years now called the gary and kenny show and you can find that on youtube you can find it on facebook um we're on all the podcast platforms and we also uh, are on dbtv which is a streaming platform that you can catch with roku that's the Gary and Kenny show. So those awesome. are the places to find me. And there must be someplace else, but <laughs> I've forgotten it. <laughs> there's so many, so many social media things to keep track of. It's, yeah. it's exhausting. You know, I tried to tweet, to tweet for a while. And then now I'm really uninterested in Twitter or Xer or whatever the heck it is. Um, I, I don't use that much and i know facebook has become geriatric and my kids don't even you know i can't get them to respond to me there but i find in our well you're a lot younger than i am but in in my community of people 40s 50s 60s i'm we're using 50s. facebook well you're very young looking i must say <laughs> um but you know, Thanks. <laughs> we use Facebook. We use it as a place to promote. We use it as a place to share funny videos and as a place to have some conversations. Yes. So I still find Facebook very valuable. Yes, I do too. I do too. I love Facebook. I mean, I know that's not, supposed, that's not cool, but uh, I, I enjoy Facebook. I enjoy I do using too. it. I enjoy using it very much. So you mentioned your your show and that's how we met. Yes. yes that's and we how met we through met. our mutual canadian friend adam yes yes indeed and uh, you know i have to tell you i i, I uh, look this can't just be a love fest simone but <laughs> but i found you to be just so open and delightful and ready to laugh uh, such a beautiful smile that um i was determined after our podcast to stay in touch with you and we have Yes, we and, have. and that's been a really yeah. nice relationship. I, yes. I look forward to seeing you in a club in person. 
Oh, I'd love that. I'd Wouldn't love that be that. something? That would be awesome. Well, that it's in our awesome. future. It's in our future for sure. Yes, because I had such a wonderful time. And I think I told you this when I when I emailed to say thank you for having me. I was like, like we hit it off right away. We hit it off instantly, yeah. you know, which was uh, which was really nice. You know, well, I is... think I think that we actually have an interesting, similar point of view, because I believe that we, we both are looking for positive aspects of life, but putting a spin on them that surprises people. You know, I was thinking about comedy and I'm not one that likes to really make turn comedy into an algebraic equation. But I was thinking, what makes me laugh? What attracts me? And it's really three things. Is 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 there relatability? Is it clever? And did it surprise me? Mm -hmm. And you have all those elements oh, because you're you. you're so full of joy and you're so easy to feel embraced by, but then you'll say something where you go, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just like your formula. Thank you. <laughs> and I relate to it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, what i'm talking about i mean yeah. it's not just a specific <laughs> joke although there are a couple but it's just your gen your general um your way of approaching the audience you know there are comics who come out and you know immediately they're going to be cynical there's comics that you know and immediately they're going to be distant um you come out and it's like oh wow the friendliest person in the world just walked out onto the stage <laughs> and then you take us through your journey you know, mm -hmm. where you want us to go. And I, I just think that that's wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think, um, I think the fact that I got into this older, much older, yeah. I was 52 when I decided, even though I wanted to do it from the time I was a kid, like 15, like early eighties. Yeah. Um, it wasn't till I was much, much older. So I think I just have a different, um, as a newer comic, I think I just have a different perspective and a different approach just because I, I do have a whole life of experience well, to draw in. That's interesting. And I, I know you're right, because, again, if maybe if I saw you 30 years ago in your 20s, um, it, you probably would have been different. I know that I'm very different and what I bring down. Now, I'm not a stand up. I tried stand up in my 20s and basically failed. And I love to tell people out that I failed. I did. I failed. Scared the the Jesus out of me because I thought I was successful. And the woman that I was dating at the time was embarrassed to be with me after oh, the no. show. She oh, said, no. you bombed. No, no, they were laughing. Not with you, literally <laughs> at you for being so bad. And I thought, if, if my um, radar... If my barometer is so askew here that I can't tell. No, now that might have been a place to mine for gold. I might have, if I had been committed, I could have said, you know what? I learned. Go back and do it again. Figure this out. Figure this out. I'll bet I could have. But at that time in my life, that was scary enough that I went into improv comedy so that mm -hmm. I was surrounded by other people. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of where I made my bones after that. So you consider yourself more of a more of an actor than than a comic? I've always considered myself an actor first. You know, and this is almost cliche, I guess, but I never it, it in an improv sketch, for example, and maybe with stand up too. See, you're funny because you're yourself. You're not trying to be someone else. It's a heightened version of yourself probably or at times yes. but it's still coming through you so that's that's acting you're acting as you as mm -hmm. yourself you're you're natural and so for me for comedy to work it can't be played as comedy it has to be real and okay. to me that's always been an acting discipline so when i did sketch comedy with brad hall julia louis dreyfus great rush pearson paul barras um all of us doing next door to second city as a matter of fact before snl we had absurd absurd concepts outrageous concepts but within it our characters were playing reality if we were pretending to be kernels of popcorn we were actually kernels of popcorn <laughs> 
Yeah, that's just one of our strange, bizarre guerrilla theater concepts. <laughs> but that's what we were. We we played it for real, just like little kids play on the playground. Mm -hmm. You know, little kids, whatever they're doing, they are in it for yeah, real. So we tried it, to yes. recapture that commitment, that integrity. So yes, in answer, long answer to your question, I've always considered myself an actor. And I think ultimately, though, I don't get many opportunities to do serious work. I think I'm a better serious actor than I am a comedian really? or comic actor. Okay. Wow. That's, that. that's interesting for me to hear. Um, Cause I never, I wish I could... <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I... No, I was just going to say, I wish I could show you more work. I mean, I have things that I've done in films and things in the past that are quite serious uh, and a couple actually deadly serious, but it's certainly not my reputation. And so if the phone ever does ring, I've been out of the business for quite a while. Um, it's always as some comedic spin on mm -hmm. something, but I interrupted you. You were coming. Oh, it's okay. Cause role. I think, cause I, I was surprised by this serious thing because I think I and um everyone who knows you associate you with Saturday Night Live so yeah. I think I automatically think comedy that like comedy would probably be your 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 first passion your first love or whatever like that rather than yeah because I I never thought of as stand-up as acting but then someone was said what you said that it's uh yeah. You're acting as a heightened version of yourself. Of like yourself. You, yeah. Yes. And I was like, oh, yes. okay, that makes sense. That does make you're, sense. You're stringing together experiences of Simone. Mm -hmm. And through it, and even though maybe somebody doesn't think that being yourself is acting, it actually is. It, it, it's yeah. very hard to be in front of people to convey yourself and actually be yourself you it, it demands because it's not natural to be yourself and have 55 to 40,000 people looking at you right. that's an unnatural <laughs> situation so in order to fuse that you have to act mm -hmm. that's true like there's some i see it as like a a type of barrier between between like the audience like however large and the actual me, like the me that I am yeah. with my friends and, you know, people that know me, that know me, but that's, yeah, yeah, that persona is the barrier between, between those two worlds. Yeah, and that's what you have to learn to sort of navigate and, mm. and, uh, and find a way to be authentic, regardless of how the audience is responding, regardless of their size, regardless of, you know, every town has a different cultural consciousness in a way or you know the mill might have closed and people are depressed you don't know what the consciousness of a room is going to be and still you right. start you know throwing darts out there and see what comes back that's a right. horrible analogy darts but you know <laughs> until you start putting your sonar out there and feeling what bounces back mm -hmm. you, you don't know right you know you have to right. adapt yourself and even maybe the timing of your jokes a little bit that's true that's true um you ran for office at some point yes for, well, for, was it was it state or was state or local I, I i started running for congress for the third district in iowa uh, i was looking to unseat a republican named rod bloom or blum bloom blum um <laughs> i forgot blum B <laughs> B L U M for anybody taking notes um but i lost the primary but I switched my race then to the, a local race for the State House of Representative. And I did lose that race. And this would be 2016, the Trump wave. <laughs> I was actually, I believe, a casualty of the Trump wave because all of a sudden in the last week or two weeks, but really the last week of that election, there was this red wave of Trumpism that even stole a bunch of blue dog democrats a lot of union democrats suddenly jumped onto the trump wagon mm. and a lot of us uh, just got bulldozed, bulldozed. by that wow. i i believe my opponent picked up steam from this phenomenon of horror 
forgive my <laughs> political editorializing that took place and i lost quite decisively and i'm not d discrediting the the um caliber of my opponent's campaign but i believe that he did get the benefit of a a, a fairly large percentage of people who at the in that last week went I want to change. I want to change mm -hmm. up and down the ticket, all the way across. I want change. Mm -hmm. And they just went red. So, um, but I always found, Simone, I'm glad you asked this or brought up the politics because it does seem like there's a little bit of a contradiction between a comedian who thinks he's an actor and all of these <laughs> things, but a politician. The way I look at what we do is it, it it's an art form. We're artists who are looking at life with a very critical lens, a very long telescope to look for all of the idiosyncrasies, to look at all of the nuances, contradictions even, of the human species, of the things that we do. That's mm -hmm. where we find our jokes. That's where we find our drama. Right. So as a stand-up, as comedic actor... Um, I believe we spend our life looking at people, looking at the human condition. I think that lends itself very well to politics because there was no reaction or no issue where I didn't feel that I had something to bring because I've looked at it already. I've looked at it deeply. We're disciplined to watch, listen, and respond to people right. and their emotions. So I think that's it's no great surprise that actors often become effective politicians. Now, that doesn't mean all actors make great politicians, but when your when your aim is true, when you're when you really are authentic in your purpose to um to help people. Mm -hmm. That doesn't come with a specific dogma necessarily. Right. You know, I have my values that i share with my friends most of them are actors and writers and directors and stand-ups but we generally share a common world view with values about social justice justice civil rights human rights then to be able to extract and observe from people their actual behaviors i believe we connect those dots very very well now i'm getting way more scientific about it than i intended to but it makes sense to me yes and so it's still look i would love to do a play i would love for someone to ask me to be in a movie and i would love to run for congress again mm. i'd love to do all those all things and they fit yes yes because i never looked at it that way that in order to communicate effectively in order yeah. and especially <clears throat> excuse me for saying politics where um you want to reach people you have to be able to like read the room for lack of a better lack perfect. of a better phrase like perfect phrase you know to gauge what what mm -hmm. the what the public is feeling or thinking about xyz subjects yeah you know and to be able to present your ideas or your thoughts about it. Well, you've said it. We're yeah. communicators. No mm -hmm. matter what it is we're doing within this art, artistic, creative umbrella, we're communicating. Mm -hmm. We're communicating what we've observed, what we felt, what others have told us, questions that we've had, answers that we've found. We're communicators. And uh, Look, I, I'm no fan of the politics of Ronald Reagan. We could make an episode about <laughs> how that movement took us down the dark hole of supply side economics, which has created income disparity, which is the root problem that we're experiencing in our e economic uh, paradigm. But I understood his effectiveness because he was such a good communicator. You know, he, he, yeah. he, was the great emancipator of taxes. He <laughs> is known, he belongs on the Mount Rushmore of, of lowering taxes, but yet he raised taxes more often. But <laughs> he sold his ideas like we were eating ice cream with him. <laughs> you know, it, he was raising our taxes and people are going, yum, yum, yummy. 
<laughs> and they still believed he was the great tax, you know, uh, mm. uh, relief. Wow. But I recognized what he was able to do. And I thought to myself, wow, imagine if I shared his ideas and values of economics, what an effective. Well, I look at John F. Kennedy a bit that way. I'm more in line with his basic value structure, even when I go back to, you know, year decades ago, reading what his feelings were. He was an excellent communicator. He had a charm and a charisma mm -hmm. that sold his ideas. Yes. I don't believe, I can't think of anyone on the world stage right now, certainly in, in, the, in America, who has the gift of communication of a Reagan, of a Kennedy. Um, I just can't think of anybody. I mean, Trump has created this cult status, but he's actually the worst communicator Yes. In perhaps world, re certainly recorded history. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, but I digress. Uh, it, it, it I, I'm just affirming what you said. We're communicators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I find the more I, the more I do this, the more I learn. I'm always learning. And I never, I never thought of myself as an artist before. I never considered myself an artist and it's, I don't know, maybe, I think it's probably because I, for me, when I hear art or artist, I think of music, I think of acting, singing, dancing, painting, uh, painting sculpting, things like that. I never thought of it as, I never thought of stand up as art. I knew at some level, I knew it had to be, I knew it was, but I well, I definitely never saw myself as that. Well, but you do now, right? I do. I do now. You, you're saying, yeah. I'm, because, I'm coming around to like I'm an artist. Well, I'm an artist. I, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll go you one further because I consider, and I'm not a stand-up, but I think it's the greatest art form. I think the ability to whether it's a three-minute set, five-minute, ten, half hour, and an hour. Mm -hmm. I saw Steve Martin years ago went for two hours. Wow. That was an artist at work taking us mm -hmm. through this comedic journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of the comics out there that I love, they've created a combination of, of, of surprise, relatability, cleverness through this vessel that each one is unique, as unique as a Cezanne is to a Picasso is to mm -hmm. a Moreau. Every stand-up is a different vessel, and I love the way they, I'm going crazy with this metaphor, <laughs> but the way they paint the picture with their jokes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I just love it. So artistry, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it's only, like, I'd say within the last last couple of years that I've seen it at that and that I've considered myself one as consider myself one as well because it's yeah just the fact that you know because we get a lot of uh oh I can't I couldn't get up in front of a bunch of people and and speak you know I think we're also a little off too to you know just you the think? motivation <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know I know just the motivation to get up in front of people not just talk we're not giving yeah. a speech or anything but to try and uh elicit laughter from well, it's, perfect strangers from right it's very it's vulnerable like this. <laughs> it's very vulnerable yes yes you yes. know again i told my brief stand-up comic experience but but even when you are with a group you can be the biggest hit one night and absolutely bomb the next and when you're doing your best work and not getting what you were doing your work to get um it's you feel naked Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah really yeah feel like <laughs> wow i just showed you everything i have and you don't like it <laughs> but it, it's it, true <laughs> it it's interesting because it plays upon uh all of us it makes us very vulnerable i mean most artists that i know and by that i mean actors and and and, and stand-ups um they aren't they didn't go into the profession because they're so cocky and sure they were vulnerable. They might have been picked on. They might have <laughs> been incredibly insecure. 
And for me, being relatively funny, it was a way to always have friends. It was a way to never get picked on anymore. You know, I could learn to deflect anything to make myself desirable as opposed to this kid with skinny legs, you know, trying to keep up with everybody else. So, uh, you know, I didn't become an actor to show off. <laughs> I became an actor to protect myself yeah. in a way. Yeah, no, I, I, I relate hard to that because I was teased mercilessly as a as a kid and I couldn't, I knew I couldn't fight back physically, but I could disarm and like uh, disarm and damage in some cases <laughs> verbally. That was the only recourse I had because I grew up in the era of sticks and stones Sticks and stones won't break my bones and words can well, never so hurt I, me. So, so I could get away at it. That, that's, it's total bullshit. That's not true. I'd rather break a bone than have like yeah. horrible words hurled at me. But yeah. back then you would get in trouble for hitting, but not for saying something because they'd say right. sticks and stones, you know, so I could defend myself like more effectively than physically. Um, and I knew I could get away with more than yeah. I could get away with. I can, I could defend myself more effectively um, verbally than I could physically. I, I learned the same thing. And, yeah. and, and I think it's important to point out, well, this got very sober and soul searching here, <laughs> didn't it? I, should I be lying on a couch here? <laughs> exactly. I'll be taking notes. <laughs> but <then> switch. <laughs> I, I rarely rarely use the verbal skills that I developed to hurt anyone. I, you know, it was never, even somebody that was picking on me, I didn't want to hurt them because I knew what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. And so I didn't, you know, I think we're empathetic. I didn't want to hurt them too, but I was able to turn something into a joke to make myself valuable. Mm -hmm. He's funny. Yeah. Why pick on him? He's great to have around. Exactly, you know? exactly, exactly. I know there was one time that I did, I knew I went too far, but I was like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I think I was about nine and I said something about some kid's mother. I made some mother, some mother joke. And I remember my, like, I guess the school called my parents or whatever. And I remember my father being like, "Where? how did you know to say that? Like, yeah. You know, where did you get that? I was like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. But I just, I said it because I knew it would stop that kid dead in his tracks. Sort it's of thing. You, just, you reminded me of the first <laughs> thing I, well, there, there's actually a ground zero for me. Uh, in second grade, I was getting picked on by the tough guy, you know, the, the, the athlete, you know, in second grade, you still the, those those lines yeah there's still the social already, exactly there's still the right, hierarchy that yeah. social strategy the hierarchy is already there and he was picking on me but i knew that he had stayed back or as we said then flunked kindergarten so i said hey steve how do you flunk kindergarten you couldn't line up a picture of a train with the word choo-choo well here's what happened i saw his face fall everybody laughed but i saw and i oh my god i heard him i mean he deserved it he deserved in it a way. but still yeah but, but still. i went wow that this is too powerful this is mm -hmm. like having you know uh, kryptonite or something you know this is just too powerful yeah but i've never forgotten that moment now i was in second grade i didn't say it probably as articulately as i just did right. but i've never forgotten the moment of just demeaning mm -hmm. his him yeah. You know, because yeah. I find that interesting that I'm 66 and this was 60 years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's the and thing. And I remember, I remember ground like zero too. of that's how powerful words are. Holy yes. smokes. Yes. Yes. I remember the, like the, the, I, my experience with the power of words was like the opposite is the first time I was called the N word as a little kid, like in the, in the schoolyard, that it was like, the kid may as well have punched me like that's how much like that's how like the wind and everything was knocked out of my sail like I get I get emotional thinking about it just it was that moment that I realized the impact 
the impact that words have. You know, well, I, it, uh, you bring tears to my eyes because I, I, I can't, I, I, I can't understand. <laughs> I I, I'm so sorry for that experience that yeah. you had to go through that. Yeah, it's uh it's a sobering thing. And I don't it's not something that any kid like whatever the that equivalent is for yeah. somebody else, that realization at such such a young age, like that that changes you, changes yeah. you as a person, you yeah. know. And I remember at that moment, I think it was from then on that I was like I'd move through the world like with fear. Yeah. Like, is someone going to call me that again? You know? Well, yeah, it's, uh, well, Simone, <laughs> I, we, we had a little pre-talk before the show and I said this, and I'm going to say it again. You, you won. You win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously. You win. Yeah. You're the winner. Mm -hmm. And wherever that person or others are now, they didn't yeah. win. You won. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's hard lessons, unfortunately, yeah. that, uh, cause I don't know anybody. I maybe, maybe you might, maybe, you know, people like this, but I don't know anybody. All the comics I know haven't gotten into it because they're like, oh yeah, it was just funny all the time. Funny, funny, funny. It's like, why were you funny? What made, right. why like, what were motivated you? you what, yeah, why were Brilliant. you funny? Why did you have to, how did you develop that skill? And it's usually some sort of trauma. Um, that... I'm going to give you, we might, maybe, hey, I have an idea here. How fascinating a book would this be to ask the biggest comics in the world, what made you funny? Yeah. How fascinating would each one of those oh, stories gosh. be? What made you funny? And I'll like, bet there isn't a yeah. comic alive that wouldn't want to answer that question. Yes. Because yes. just I off think the top maybe of we head. just gave a book away because <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's a really, I yeah. think, I, I, call me crazy. Go ahead. Call me crazy. No, no. I no, think no, that I is an extraordinary book, not just for comics, but for anyone to read what made mm -hmm. you funny because you know it's going to be experiences like yours like mm -hmm. mine and a zillion yes, others yes yes like off the yeah. i actually have goosebumps at this idea yeah <laughs> no you should write the i would it's the <laughs> it, it, i just don't think of a i can't think of a comic that would turn it down mm -hmm. what made you fun? anyway all right yeah. moving on yeah. <laughs> but and, and, and there is a sidebar here the, the 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 young man in second grade that i made melt away we're in our 60s and we're great friends oh. so <laughs> So, you know, if your aim is true, you, mm -hmm. you win, you win. Yeah. And then, and then there's also growth and all kind of, all of that stuff yeah, that right. you hope happens on, yeah. <laughs> on both ends. To others yeah. and to oneself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, <laughs> that's our inside speak, joke. Speaking of being cool, I want to point out that I'm not a Hawaiian shirt guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm really not. It's just, I was looking for something. It's so hot here. We've been in the hundreds here in Iowa. Ooh. And so I just kind of put on this shirt and I think, well, I don't know. I look like a, <laughs> kind of a funny guy on a day off, but I'm not a Hawaiian shirt guy. I'm really a suit guy. I a mean, suit I'm really, guy? You know, yeah, I'm a suit guy. So this, you're not really getting the, the, essence the, the physical of me here. Okay. Whereas well, the you look very nice well. and colorful with the polka dots. I love yeah, polka I'm not, dots. I'm not this guy. <laughs> the color is great on you though. Well, blue. I had my colors done years ago. You know what that is? Oh, yes, yes. It's one of those stupid things that people think they is hold real. Swatches where they hold your... swatches and they determined that I was a winter and that's okay. a vivid blue, for example. So I'm a winter. <laughs> You're a winter. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what I what I what I would be considered. I I like to think I could wear any color. I just I, think... I, I know I stay away from orange and I usually stay away from yellow. Orange and yellow. Yeah. Although I just... I, I'm not seeing orange, but I I see yellow. I I yellow. mean I think yellow would look good on you. I've worn yellow. The thing is, I've worn yellow and I've worn orange, yeah. but they're not my favorite. I find it just there's something with the reflection. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, no one wants to reflect orange anymore <laughs> in the age of Trump. 
<laughs> Besides, orange to me means you're you're doing community service on the side of the road, picking up dead <laughs> squirrels true. anyway. So orange is gone. Orange <laughs> is not the new black. Yeah, exactly. No. Orange, orange is out. <laughs> it's like this is like wild for me because I usually wear black. I, I like, like I like wearing, wearing black. Now. Yeah, thank you. I like I and, do like this top. <laughs> the yes, dots. and polka dots are timeless. Yes, yes, they're they're timeless. <laughs> that's the most I can enlightenment on fashion that I can ever give you right there is the timelessness of polka dots and that I'm a winter and <laughs> orange should be banned there was something else that I wanted to ask you about um like your career when um like in the 80s when you were younger did you have encouragement from your family to pursue a career in the arts well Wow, that's an interesting question. And that'll be part of my answer when I write my chapter in what <laughs> made you funny. What makes you funny? Um, my parents were terrific. They're both passed away. Um, my dad was an engineer, very, you know, pens pocket in the protector. pocket kind of guy. And my mother was a school teacher. Oh, my, um, both my parents were school teachers, my late. Is that right? Yes. Well, in my home was a was a was a solid sense of 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 um, freedom, liberty, justice. I mean, I know I'm sounding a little corny right now, but my parents were all about fairness, integrity, honesty, and when that's the basic um, formula of your home, you don't have an agenda for everybody. My father was like, you should da 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 They encouraged whatever we wanted to do. My brother is a nuclear physicist, so that made some sense where my father was concerned. But I've always been this kind of marginally funny actor guy. That doesn't fit into school teaching necessarily, or mm -hmm. certainly not engineering, but they knew that I was good at it and that I loved it. So they attended everything that I did. And when I said, I want to go to Northwestern, which was hugely expensive theater school, they went, well, I guess we'll have to figure out how to make that happen. Mm. When my career was up, they enjoyed it. When it was down, they never said, son, get out. No, the only no. thing that was once said to me, <laughs> when my mother said, sweetheart, have you thought about going back to college and becoming a lawyer because lawyers do act <laughs> they act in the courtroom i think you'd be very happy as a lawyer you know thanks mom <laughs> but but it was still she was acknowledging the fact that i had to act mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and you know my career had ups and downs i was uh, felt like i'd won the lottery when i went to snl and then i had some success but then i was in the toilet for a few years to where it was desperate but my parents never tried to say do something else they came out to los angeles and they said how can we help you how can mm. we help you get back on your feet wow. so i was in that sort of a home and i know that i was very lucky wow wow yeah because the reason i ask is because my parent both my parents are gone as well and um as supportive as they were um they wanted they wanted me to be like an engineer or my sister and stuff like that, where my sister was the more artistic one. Like she did all the plays in school and stuff like that. And she, I think she would have wanted to pursue a career. My parents were like, no, you need to get something practical. You know what I mean? Like that, like that's not a job sort of thing. So yeah, even though like we did extracurricular activities and like our artistic sides and stuff were, were um were what's the word they accommodated them but those were like extracurricular mm -hmm, things right. like when it came to school and stuff like that so i never to be fair my parents never they knew i liked comedy because i would rent dv i'd rent v8 not dvds i'd rent yeah. you know vhs tapes and watch specials or i'd go when i was old enough and you know had a part-time job or whatever save money and go to jfl and go to save money to go to a gala and stuff so they knew i liked that that i enjoyed it but i never shared that i wanted to do it because mm -hmm. i don't think i don't think it would have gone over well 
Well, you know, the, yeah. you have to, you have to, under, I mean, you do understand. And, and, and I respect parents who are like that in that mm -hmm. they have, they, they want their kids to be successful. Absolutely. Yes. And, and they, they, they sometimes see a path that makes a mm -hmm. whole heck of a lot more sense, certainly than becoming a stand up comic yeah. <laughs> or an actor where yes. the success rate is like 1%. Yeah. Or, that's the know, thing. I mean, and it's, I think it's, it, it's, it was more from a practical yes, sense, so not it, a, it, not a kill your dreams kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It, 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 it is an extension of their love. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in my case, I was very lucky that they determined that their three boys they had their happiness was the most important thing that that will lead to success now they weren't mm -hmm. hippy dippy i mean they were as conservative looking as two people could be right. but but they had a sense of happiness is what contentment fulfillment purpose right. is what will make their son successful so mm -hmm. they let us do whatever it is we wished right and i think and that was fortunate I think with like with my parents, because my sister and I are first generation Canadian. So my parents came from South America and it, it's just, I think the immigrant mentality, I think that played a big role in yep. it as well. Because the thing is, it's like we grew up in, you know, um, grew up very comfortably and like we play piano and all of these, all of these artistic things, but I knew that I couldn't say I want to do stand. I want to be a stand up yeah. sort of thing, and I think I like. How can I put it? I had my sister as a guest on 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 this show a couple of years ago, and I asked her, you know, what did you? I I, I asked her like when I told you I was going to pursue stand up or or try it. I, I said, what did you think? And she said, I you could have knocked me over with a feather. I'm like, really? She's like, if you had given me a thousand choices of things that you might do, she's like, that wouldn't have been on the list at all. Well, I'm going to dig <laughs> up that episode. I want to <laughs> see that because that's a beautiful thing to do, by the way. Seriously, to bring bring your sister on and to ask yeah. that question, I think is fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. I, I can um, send you the link. But that's interesting. Yeah. So I, I asked her that and then I had two of my closest friends from high school and I asked them the same thing. And the, I think it just shows like the relationships that I had were different that I had with my sister and my family versus like my friends, because my friend, Melissa, who's we're still close to this day. Uh, she was the only one that I had told. Mm -hmm. I, she's the only one I had told. And she's like, you could do it. You could do it at the time. Like when we spoke about it a few years ago, what she didn't say was like, I don't know how you're going to do it because you're shy as fuck. You're pain painfully <laughs> shy. You can't speak in public. But when you're relaxed and you feel good, you're funny. So she's like, I knew you could do it. Whereas my sister was like, I never saw that coming. You know, I because it, I think I just kept that to myself. I think about if you were to ask my parents and my brothers what Gary would do, I think that <laughs> they would have said an actor or in jail <laughs> i'm kind of kidding about the in jail part but i mean they they saw it as all or nothing for me mm, they okay. they they knew that you know i uh, i wasn't shy i came out of my shyness i learned to not be shy relatively quickly and so mm -hmm. i did all the plays and i did all the you know i would lead the assemblies at school and do imitations of the principal and i i got all of that sort of mojo around me mm -hmm. and so my parents my family saw that and go, well he's as good as anybody he's going to make it and if he doesn't i i really don't know what the alternative is going to be <laughs> so, so he'd better make it you know like i say i gave them a roller coaster of excitement and 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 trepidation kept them on their toes for their son i kept them on their toes um my mother lived to 95, so that's probably why. She just wanted to make sure that I was okay before she left. Um, but, you know, it, it it is. I look back, would I have liked a more sustained success? Would I have liked to have been Jerry Seinfeld? Would I have liked to have been a sitcom star? Would I have liked to have been Jim Carrey? Yeah. Yeah. Did I accomplish that? No. No. But... I've come, you know, you talk, we talked earlier about just growing up and seasoning with age. 
Mm -hmm. I've come to realize that what I what I've done is interesting. It's fun. Most of it's been exhilarating. But where I am is where I want to be. It's where I'm supposed to be. I'm as happy as can be. And mm -hmm. I there's a lot of things that come, as Jim Carrey will tell you now, the baggage that comes with that superstardom can be debilitating, yeah. suffocating, yeah. limiting. I don't have any of those limitations. And I still get to do the craft that I built. You know, I'm still the local MC for this and that. I still, you know, ran for Congress and gave speeches on the stump and all of that stuff. I still get to utilize my skills at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it comes down to your perspective. That's yeah. what I got. <laughs> I tried for other things, got some things I expected, some that I didn't expect, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, fell on my face a couple of times. I've got great stories to tell. Um, but I look around and I make new friends like you and we talk about this journey. Yeah. yeah. What's better than this, Simone? Seriously, yeah. what's better than this? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, because my father always used to say everything in its time. Yeah. And I think I was like, have been perpetually like a late bloomer and um like I always did things like 10 years like a 10-year delay or something I don't know what that is but just <laughs> I was always on a delay or something and I know the very first time I performed my very first like stand-up set in a club and all of this I remember I was like high on adrenal adrenaline after I was just yeah. like I didn't sleep for like two days <laughs> but yeah. I know I remember when I left the club and like my sister and friends and everything had come to Ottawa for it and at the end of the night when I left the club and I got to my car I sobbed I sat in there and I sobbed for maybe a good, at least 20 minutes before I drove why? home why I was overwhelmed that I had finally done it like after after dreaming and wishing yeah. of doing it for so many years, but most of all, I wished that my parents were there oh. because all they wanted, all they ever wanted was, and all they ever wanted was for me to find like a passion, something that I really loved. And I've done cool things too. Like I've gone back to school, I've learned all kinds of different things and, you know, but I never felt passionate about any of any any of the things that I've done I've done them it was cool whatever but like the just the amount of of work and effort and love that I put into stand-up I think that would have made them proud they might have been like you're gonna go up and tell dick jokes and tell us things that we don't well, want to hear about you well you know <laughs> but I, I think don't... they the fact that they I think the fact that I found something that I love doing that would have, that would have made them proud. And I, uh, and I think just knowing them, because I had a very, I remember reading in one of your blogs that you said that you had a very close relationship with both of your parents. I did too. Yes. I did too. And losing them was. Well, terrible. two things I want to say here. So <laughs> yeah. first of all, you know, we, we thought this hour was going to be a lot of comedy. And you made me cry <laughs> twice. <laughs> I want to point that out, yeah. but uh, let me say this, and th and this might sound kind of corny, but I mean it so sincerely. They 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 are with you when you do your act, because there's nothing that I do where I don't hear them, where I don't see them, where I don't imagine the reflection of of their thoughts. No matter what I do, yeah. I get in front of people now, and I'll make a joke, and I still go, I'll still think, what what did mom think of that? <laughs> so she's there. And I yeah. still, my dad's been gone for 21, two years. Um, but he such a, was such a force in my life that I still, I still measure my own heart by next to his. In other words, if mm -hmm. I do anything positive for the community, I'm comparing myself to my father. Mm -hmm. So that is a presence. That's a very real and living presence in our lives still because they're, yeah, they're talking to us. And so mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> this has been a love fest, Simone, <laughs> of of tears and thankfulness and it's sharing true. the 
certain it's heartaches, true. but yeah. but uh, this has been meaningful, very yeah. very meaningful. Thank you, thank you. Because yeah, I like I I just remember that night that it was like I wish that they were there, you know. Well, they um, were. Yeah, like I I they're with me all the time. I under I understand that, and at by the same token, I know that. I know that if they felt that they had held me back from pursuing this, that would have hurt them. Yeah. Because that wouldn't have been their intention. I don't think, I don't, I think, I think if they were here and they see how much I love, even though they might not understand like what the motivation and everything, they'd be happy with, happy that I'm happy doing that. And I think they would have felt some kind of way if, if they felt that like I waited that long because of them when in all fairness, I never told them in all fairness, I never told them that this is one. I just assumed that they're not going to be on board. They're not going to, they're not going to, they, well, they won't it, be on board for this. You know? Again, uh, uh, <laughs> it happened the way it happened. Yes. You are. I mean, I know I'm sounding like I just smoked a fatty here, <laughs> but it, 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 we are where we are because this is where we're supposed to be right yes. now. And how we got yes. here is is the story yeah. we have to tell. And, right. You know, I and and look, I, you're younger than I am, but I still feel like I just graduated college, and mm. I still wake up every morning. You can ask my wife, <laughs> like, what what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to be when I grow up? I, mean, mm. I honestly still feel that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I look forward to our relationship and seeing, you know, I got to get up to see you and Adam one of these days. Yes, soon. yes, yes. Because Adam lives a few hours away from me. Yeah. We're, we're not. Oh, like it's a big country. I'm it's a big country. <laughs> we're in the same yeah, province. There's a lot of space up there because we're getting your wildfires, by the way. <laughs> the, the smoke is coming down on the on the jet stream and going right through Iowa. Exactly. So I smell Canada every day. <laughs> thank you <laughs> no i have to leave you uh but i know okay. you, didn't you have a little thing you wanted to do the little oh question yes out of a if, hat? if you still if you have the time yes so yeah. i have uh i have these questions and they range from silly to deep and i have 250 of them but we're not going to do 250 you just draw one arbitrarily yeah you just, just pick a number randomly? and i'll read the corresponding question oh okay so one in a yeah. hundred 56. 56 no 57 that's the year i was born 57, 57? okay I uh, this is totally appropriate number 57 are you proud of what you're doing with your heart and time right now you know I, it's gonna sound so corny and i apologize <laughs> i wish that i were more cynical um to such a degree that my heart bursts I'm not perfect and not every decision I make is altruistic and, you know, with all the divine grace, but where I am right now is a daily commitment to moving the needle for my family, my kids. I have a foster son that I've just taken in um, and to this community and to create a social consciousness doing my own little part of it, <laughs> you just never know when when something catches fire. And so every day I am committed to moving that needle a click forward to bring people together, to show them a different way, a better way, um, to show them a more compassionate way. Um, because I make that commitment every day, literally every day, I feel very good about my heart and what I'm doing at this time in my life. I don't think that I could have done this 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Yeah. But where I am, um, I feel I have a lot to give that I can afford to be generous with my with, with my heart. And um, well, what a lovely question. And um, yes, <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. I feel good. That's amazing. I feel it's, good. It's, da, na, 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 na. I knew that I would now. <laughs> and this was like the the perfect question to uh, to end our discussion on. That's amazing. 
Well, thank you so much. Well, thank much. you, Simone. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you. I'll catch you on Facebook. I told yes. you I kind of stalk you yeah. there now. <laughs> and, that's, and I'm totally fine with that. That's, I'm totally um, fine with that. <laughs> I adore you. And um, I'll see you thank later. You. Okay? I adore you too. So thank well, you so I'll much. talk to you plenty before then. Yes, yes, we we will we will stay in touch and we will we will communicate before this comes out for sure. All right. So thank See you, you later. so much. See you later. Bye -bye. Thank you for watching, everyone. See you next time. <laughs>